Good evening. Welcome to uh, St. Peter's. Um, our service is printed in your bulletin. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I will go to the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil. All that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night, when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves as Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he has become man, so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. So that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins and to comfort and establish the New Testament which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him and has eternal life. We should also at do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. Giving him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another as he loved us. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with wine of many grapes and one bread made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and truth. May the almighty and merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. 
Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins to him, imploring him for the sake of our of his son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. O oh, almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you to is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. For this first lesson for this Monday, Thursday, is from the 12th chapter of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, Every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night Roasted on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted its head with its legs and its inner parts. 
and you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and all the gods of Egypt will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a fast to the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judge ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemning, not be condemned along with the world. This is the word of God. Be Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, 
you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but it is completely clean, and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Now, is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him? If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the hymn of the day.
Grace and peace be yours through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text is taken from the 10th chapter, 1 Corinthians. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Thank you for the gift of your Son who comes to us in his body and blood and for the gift of the congregation in which we hear your word proclaimed faithfully and where we receive this life-giving sacrament. Nourish our faith to receive the gifts which strengthen us in you and the whole company of heaven praising you. Amen. Most uh, music scholars will agree that the greatest symphony that was ever written was by Beethoven, known as Symphony No. 3, Eroka. A symphony is an interesting composition of music. It is made of a great deal of different instruments playing at the same time. Now, your taste may run differently. You might like heavy metal or country and western, and a symphony is probably about the last thing you want to turn on on your radio. But if you would listen to a symphony, you would begin to identify all the different instruments that are playing, and they're so different, violin to uh, viola, kettle drums and piccolos and French horns. They're all different, yet The composer has written the music so that they all blend and work together in harmony. In fact, that's what the word symphony means, one sound from many instruments. In a way, a church is like a symphony. We have all sorts of different people, different ages, different backgrounds, different experiences, and God has given them different gifts in order to do his mission here on earth. And we work together. We work together not because we are so clever or so cooperative, but it's God who works through us and directs us like a conductor leading a symphony, using all our gifts, our different backgrounds to do our work under the name of Jesus Christ. In Christ, we are one, and he draws us and renews us through the Lord's Supper so that we may be one in him. We call the Lord's Supper a means of grace. In other words, it is the way that God brings into our life the gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. It is under his direction. Now, man can be very inventive. Man can bring different theories together to explain what is going on, or sometimes they just guess, or sometimes they will come up with something that has no rhyme or reason. But man is inventive in that way that he or she is always searching. But the thing about a sinful nature that all of us have inherited from our first parents, the thing about a sinful nature is that we cannot by ourselves and by our own efforts fix our sinful situation. Only God can do that. If you've uh, attended our Bible studies on uh, Sunday mornings, you know that we are wrapping up our study of Genesis. And one of the things that stands out in Genesis is that even if you take the very best of mankind, you still have a bunch of sinners. God picked out Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You would think they would be the very best, but in so many, well, my, my wife uh, characterized it very well. She says, it's sort of like a soap opera. They have all these problems, 
and all these interactions with other people that don't go so well. Yes, that's the human predicament. We fail because we are sinners. What does God do? He gives us a promise. And he shows that in Genesis, as he starts out this wonderful story of our salvation with Abraham, who believed the Lord, and he, God, counted it to him as righteousness. Not his deeds, not his obedience, but his faith. He believed in the Lord. And that runs throughout all the Old Testament into the New Testament until we hear Paul say to us in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by the preaching of Christ. Once again, man can't invent it or achieve it. It is only through the preaching of Christ that we come to faith. Now, God has set this all out. It is fairly easily explained. But as human beings, when it comes to spiritual things, we have a real struggle with that. We're just not used to doing that kind of stuff, spiritual things. And God understands that. God who created us knows us much better than we can ourselves. So God also chooses to come to us in very concrete ways. Now, when I say concrete, I don't mean just the stuff that's mixed up and poured out and smoothed out and gets hard. No, I mean concrete in the, say, in the sense of nice and solid things, things that we can grasp, that we can see, that we can get our hands on, that we can understand much better than things that are really a little hard for us to get our heads around. And so he chooses, chooses to bring forgiveness of sins to us through a very concrete way, the body and blood of Christ. The Lord's Supper has one purpose, and that is to give us the forgiveness of sins. It takes something that is spiritual, but makes it real to us. For our mouths taste the wine, our mouth chews the bread. We know that it's there. And because it is connected with God's word and promise, we know that we are receiving it. It is ours now. And so our Savior comes to us in the body and blood of himself to sacrifice himself so we might have forgiveness. Now, how shall we use that gift? We all get gifts different times of the year. Sometimes we open up the package and we look at the gift and we say, thank you. And then it goes into a closet, never to see the light of day again. Or maybe we re-gift it and give it to somebody else, or we exchange it. That's kind of the way many of us deal with gifts. But I think we could all agree that even though one gift might be welcomed by one person and not by another, I think we would all agree that the gift that is the best is the one we use the most and get the best benefit from it. That's a gift we really appreciate, a gift that keeps on giving good things to us. That's the gift that God has given to us in the Lord's Supper, something to be used frequently because we are frequently sinners, and so we need the forgiveness that God offers to us. It is the gift that Christ has won for us. Now, there are some people who don't think they are sinners. They don't think they've done anything wrong, that in fact, if they could be so bold to be honest with you, they would say, you know, God's pretty lucky to have me. I am certainly much better than a lot of other people. 
They are not impenitent, they are not sorry for the sin, and they don't look to the Savior for forgiveness because they do not need it. But the whole point of the Lord's Supper, the whole point of Jesus Christ, is to bring us the forgiveness of sins. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is life and salvation. For the penitent who are really sorry for their sins and have faith that their sins are fully and completely forgiven in Jesus Christ, they have full salvation. Therefore, it is important to be one in Christ who through his death on the cross died for the sins of the whole world. Now, some people say, no, no, Jesus only died for those who will be saved. But that's not what Jesus said, did he? John 3, 16, a much quoted verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For the world, for every human being, Christ died on the cross so that every human being could have salvation. For there is no salvation without Christ. This is what Christ has done for us. Now, I know I said it, but how can you, in a concrete way, even come close to understanding it? Oh yes, we know world, we know people, but can we imagine what that really means? Now most of you have lived, or maybe even grown up here in Joliet. You're well acquainted with the river that runs through your town, the Des Plaines River. Do you know how much water passes under the bridge on I-80 per second? 4,000 cubic feet of water. Now I probably have lost you at this point. I was lost, I had to read that a number of times, try to figure out what, because we don't measure water in feet. Quartz, yes, gallons, okay, I understand that. Okay, well 4,000 cubic feet of water is about 120,000 uh, quarts of water. Now we, we can understand a quart. We can picture a quart. Now think of 120,000 quarts passing under the bridge per second. Now make a little jump over Instead of water, think of it as people. 120,000 people, only 20,000 short of the population of Joliet. One second, they all go under and pass through that bridge. That's a lot of people, very quickly. Now, imagine all the people who have ever been born. Now, I didn't try to figure that out went to the experts, and who knows where they got that information, but it's a very substantial amount of people. Imagine all the people, the world, all the people who have been born and existed. How long would it take for all of them to pass through, like the waters of the Des Plaines River, under the bridge on I-80? all those people. You would take 17 years and six weeks for all those people to pass the bridge on I-80. I know, that doesn't really help. It's such a huge concept, a number that we can't even get our heads around that, much less Something simply said, God so loved the world. And that Christ on the cross died for them and those yet to come. Only God could do it. Only God 
could save his creation. And he does through Jesus Christ. Sometimes we see people who go into a cemetery and they bring flowers. Maybe it's a widow, maybe it's a widower. They come to visit the gravesite of someone they loved who has passed away. They lay the flowers down, they pause for a moment. If we look at them and feel their burden, feel their hurt, it goes right to the heart, doesn't it? It's a sad thing. To think that all that is left for them now is the memory and the remains of that person. Now, as a Christian, we find comfort in saying and consoling one another by saying that those who die in Christ have the hope of eternal life. And I I don't mean hope in maybe, but hope in yes, with certainty. That's what I'm going to build my hope on. Okay, so we as Christians believe that, but God has given us something even better even better for the widow or the widower who is mourning the passing of that loved one, their voice not to be heard again, their steps so familiar, not being able to hear that again, can take great comfort in knowing that when they come to the Lord's altar, something very great happens. Those who have died in Christ are where? They're with Christ, aren't they? When we come up to the Lord's table, we know that Christ is here. His body and blood is here, given to us for the forgiveness of our sins. And we're reminded in the liturgy, too, when we sing, therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. What are we saying? That heaven at that moment is stooping down. The barrier between what can be seen and what can't be seen is eliminated. That heaven stoops down to where we are. And those that we love, that have died in Christ, are near to us, a living nearness of what Christ has done and will do for us as well. That gives us great courage, great hope and happiness to celebrate that each week. In Christ's body and blood, he has given us forgiveness, life, and salvation. He has also drawn all of us together in the communion of saints, where for eternity we find great joy in those who love the name of the Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Please rise for the offertory which we will read together. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the gift of divine peace and pardon for all our hearts and with all our minds. Lord, in your mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world for the proclamation of the gospel, for Reverend David Totsky and his family as they prepare to bring their ministry here, for Missionary Leaf Camp, Lord, in your mercy. 
for our nation and protection from harm for our civic leaders, that they administer peace and justice for a spirit of cooperation and fairness among our lawmakers for prosperity for the end of the pandemic, for the common welfare of us all. Lord, in your mercy, for seasonable weather and protection from harsh weather dangers. Lord, in your mercy, for the homebound, for the sick and dying and those who care for them, especially Anne, Debbie, Declan, Lois, Joseph, Martha, Michelle, Anita, Colette, Joe, Norma, Beverly, Justin, Phyllis, Darren, Seal, Matthew, Phyllis, Bernie, Pastor Bill Chorman, Pastor Bernie Fick, Dorothy, Liz, Roland, Dennis, Todd, and Rod. Lord, in your mercy, for all those in need, for those seeking employment, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and those who must raise their children alone, those who face great burdens, for the orphaned, for those in prison. Lord, in your mercy, for those who labor, for all those who travel, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, especially Lisa, Lucas, and Beth, Sonia, Wendy, Kristen, Shelby, Cindy, Monica, Andrew, Krista, Devon, Mary, Julie, Kim, Dr. Bess, Rhonda, Heather, Dr. Ryan, Dr. Michelle, Greg, Sandy, and Tim, and those who are essential workers. Lord, in your mercy. For those who celebrate birthdays this week, Arlene, Anthony, Lindsay, Jeff, Erica, Ronald, Aaron, Marion, Sandy, Brianna, Olivia, Benjamin, Leona, Kathleen, and Steele, Lord, in your mercy. For those who celebrate wedding anniversaries, especially Donald and Marion and Dan and Carolyn, Lord, in your mercy. To your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, there life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the, true, the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and with all, with archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, when, when he was betrayed, the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do as, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. 
This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given and shed for you for the remission of all your sins. May the strength and preserve you in the true faith and to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. The body of Christ given for you. Take eat, this is the true body. of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Given into death for all your sins. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Take eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ given into death for all your sins. The body of Christ given for you. Take eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given into death for all your sins. the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Take eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given into death for all your sins. The body of Christ given for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.